composing gloves here and today we're going to be checking out the comb filter module inside of phase plant it is a or just as a snap in it is a pretty dang crazy module here's an example that uses a comb filter <laughs> adding motion and also just sort of blurring things in general, which is kind of what I like to use co-filters for a lot. They can also be useful for stereo widening. So here's an example where I have one that's creating mono-compatible stereo widening. Let's play uh, some higher notes. Let me take it off. We also lose a little bit of motion. So if we listen to a note with it off, now with it on, we can hear it moving around and doing things. We can see here, it's a pretty simple module because it's only got frequency, polarity, and stereo, and it's pretty easy to demonstrate. So really quick, let's load up a blank phase plant. Let's open up an oscillator and make it a sine wave. Let's open up a comb filter. So a comb filter, let me open up a slice EQ to demonstrate this. A comb filter got its name because normally a comb filter is a series of band rejection things. It's usually to remove like an unwanted component from a signal. Like if, for example, if you have 60 hertz hum, you could try and get rid of that by using comb filtering. And what it does is we have these notches and they could be in all sorts of different places and we could select them and move them around as a unit. At 60 hertz, we would try and nail down that harmonic series and hence get rid of the buzzing noise. Now, this is pretty interesting. And it's also, this is why it's called a comb filter. It kind of looks like the teeth of a comb, right? So if I had like a comb and put it against my screen here, it would kind of look like this a little bit. <laughs> but there are other types of comb filters that involve uh, more complicated things where the maybe they don't move around in the same way throughout the spectrum. So maybe as this moves up, this one actually like moves closer to this or even goes down or, you know, things can get really crazy. There can also be peaking going on. And so, as you can imagine, scrolling this up and down a sound is going to jack it up pretty good, which is the idea. And if you ever mess with comb filters, I encourage you to get as many kinds as you can because everyone seems to do it different. And they all have their own unique sounds because of the wide variability we can wind up with. But, I mean, like, just look at that. That's crazy looking. So that's a comb filter. That's why it's called a comb filter. So naturally, we're sending in a sine wave here into a comb filter. Now, this is one of the tamer comb filters that I've worked with. So I like to use this one to smooth sounds over and create interesting motion. It's actually one I really, really like. Um, there are others that can get just way crazy sounding, which are great sometimes. But a lot of the times, it can actually do things you don't want. It just depends. You just got to know what you're getting yourself into. So we're feeding this thing a sine wave. So this would respond really differently to like a saw wave, right? Because it would affect a bunch of frequencies at the same time. But I'm going to feed it a sine wave. So we're either going to hit a peak, a trough, or we're not going to hit a part that does either. So if I go ahead and play a sine wave, let's scroll this frequency selector around until we hear it change. So there's a peak. Somewhere right there, 315 hertz. Now, if I flip the polarity, the peaks will become troughs and the troughs will become peaks. So imagine that slice EQ I had open. Imagine the picture flipping. That's basically what happens. So if I play this, well, well let's, uh, we're getting a small one. Let me find a better, let's find a trough. Okay, so troughs right around here. If I flip it, bit easier of a demonstration. It's easier for me to hear troughs than it is to hear peaks, at least in my opinion. Opinions may vary. So, okay, that's polarity. Stereo, what stereo does, really cool, is it flips the polarity in one channel. Now, this is mono-compatible because if we have peaks in one channel and troughs in the other, when you sum them together, they'll can't, their effects will cancel each other out, and we will get our mono signal in the middle that won't have any sort of Coloration. It's, it's mono compatible. It will not sum destructively. It will sum constructively. It won't, there won't be a difference. You know what I mean, okay? Mono compatible. So if we turn this on, we hear the phase flip. So in, in my right 
Mm-hmm. My right headphone sounds very loud, and my left doesn't sound like anything because we hit we hit a trough there. And if we actually flip the polarity, we can hear that now it's disappeared from our right, and we can hear it in our left. So there's a demonstration of it in action just on a basic sine wave. Now, in these other patches I have here, I'm using it as that glossy sort of movement. Um, so if I play this note, that crazy kind of noise is actually coming from the sync function. We talked about this in an earlier episode. But the comb filter is here to add glossiness to the patch. It's moving these notches and peaks around, and it just creates interesting motion. If you have really brittle high stuff, the comb filter can add some really nifty things. So I really like to use it on bass sound design. Now, polarity becomes interesting if there are stereo differences. So if the left channel is different from the right channel, then that can be interesting if you distort it and then mess with the polarity because it's going to drive the distortion differently. So there are cases where this will become a more important button to you. A lot of the time, probably not actually going to do that much unless you fulfill the criteria I just mentioned. So there's an example of it. Hey, let's uh, get rid of it just so you can hear it. See here, it's got a lot more of that forward bright sound, which is which is not bad. I, I would probably bounce it out as a layer and then pick between the two at various parts in the track. But if I turn this on, you can hear the motion in there. And that's that's why I like comb filters. So there's an example with the bass patch. On this other patch with this sort of a... Uh, this one, actually, the comb filters don't do a whole lot, mostly because this one's basically pretty static. When it moves up, this you can hear it. Now, this one jumps down really fast and is, again, sort of just set by ear. I was mostly just looking for an interesting timbre. With these off, they don't have a tremendous impact. We do lose some of the stereo widening, though. So this one's doing stereo widening. So this sounds more mono. We open this up. It becomes a little bit wider. So these are like more subtle uses. I was experimenting with them and found that an enjoyable result. And then we have our Reese lead sound. <laughs> this is not a Reese lead sound. Where are you? Nope. Oh, by the way, this patch is just sample based, and I'm using a couple of things in here, like the Bit Crusher, for example. Um, it is actually range specific. <laughs> so you see how different that sounds then? If I go really low, it changes the nature like violently. So it's kind of an interesting thing when you introduce processes that don't follow the keyboard like you would expect. There it is. So you can see like in the earlier video, we've got an ensemble sort of washing the sound out a bit without that. We get a much more forward sound. Wasn't really going for that. And then we have got a comb filter here doing a little bit of stereo widening and moving around to create that motion. And that's what we have. Now, Let's go ahead, let's make a patch, shall we? So let's load up a phase plant. Excuse me. And let's load up a, let's, uh, what should we make? Well, let's go ahead, let's load up a analog. Let's load up two analogs. We'll have one be an octave lower. We're just gonna put in minus 12 here. Drag that on up. I want this one on the bottom. We'll make this one a square wave. What the hey? I want this one a square wave. It totally did not switch places. Now it has switched. There we go. That's our input. And let's go ahead and toss a comb filter on this. And let's automate that. But let's do it somewhat randomly. So I'm going to grab a random module, bring the smooth up. I like the rate that it's at. Actually, no, I don't. I want this to be slower because the comb filter when it messes with things that are in the lower register, you can get these crazy phase shifts that can cause these weird frequency bending. Let me just show you. It'll be easier to just show you. So let's go ahead. Let's modulate this. Um, go the other way. You see how like 
all that that's going on there, the retuning sort of thing. If we make this faster. And that's as it moves around, you get these sort of effects that the comb filter causes. So making it move slower can help smooth that out. just random motion. I also want to attach this random motion to one of the sync functions. Let's play a low note. Heck yeah, dude. And let's run this into a distortion. Let's use the fold back and let's turn on stereo. And let's turn on spread here. Now let's go ahead and toss another comb filter on. That's, what would this? Ha what would happen if we just toss like three comb filters on? Let's shift them each up by like a range. Now the ranges do have a tremendous impact on the sound because like high frequencies being filtered, you know, are gonna sound way different than low frequencies being filtered. So this would be kind of cool. And let's uh, let's toss an LFO on one, and just sort of make it a bit small. We'll go with sync and we'll. Choose something slow. And let's go with even slower. And then on the other one, we'll give it a, a random generator, but this one will be like randomly shifting. And let's make this a bit faster here. Uh, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make this sync because that'll sort of make more sense musically. And I think I'm also going to change this sync function with respect to this generator so that this one will change on the beat when we get those nice sort of nice moments. What am I saying? You heard out earlier, there were these moments that were like, wow, that was the sync function moving around as well as these moving around. So this one's not synced and it's pretty slow, which is why they were a bit more rare. So I'm going to try and sort of see if I can sort of force it up a bit more. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Let's go ahead and let's drive this one a little bit with this modulator as well, just to sort of encourage that. And this randomness will just sort of add to it. that long motion in there. We've got this nice stuff going on in the low end. This is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and I'm thinking, what else do we want to do this? I want to try messing with the chorus real quick. Bring the delay way down and the rate down. The depth, ah, bring it up a bit. Bring the taps up. And I want to try adding a unison to the saw since it's a higher level thing and leave the bass a little more defined. So the unison, when you're on unison two, is going to be really powerful as far as like Reese stuff because it's just two voices colliding. But if we bring this up to three and move the blend and the spread, move the blend up and move the spread, we get a little bit more of a smooth sound. Three voices is kind of a magical number when it comes to doing that. This would be interesting to mess with this unison instead. What have I done? I've made a monster. Nope, I'm gonna stick with what I had up here. I liked it a bit more. for a legato and instead of this let's smooth it out I feel like smooth probably be a good idea <laughs> let's add a faturator I just want to see what these sound like together and we're getting very loud let's take this down
I'm going to leave the Thatcherator off of this. All right, now one thing we might want to do at the end here is toss in a slice EQ. I kind of want to mess with a bit more modulation too. Let's come in here and add some modulation to the semi cent. Yeah, that's what I want to do. All right, the FM was not a good idea, so I took it off. I'm instead going to mess with some filter movement now really quick, besides just the comb filters. Like, I'm talking like a bigger filter movement, like something like a, a filter clamping down. And we're going to do this with an envelope and bring the attack up. Let's uh, minimize some of these and grab this and move it on the cutoff. Listen to this at full Q. That's ridiculous. I'm going to turn on retrigger. This reminds me of so many tracks. And this seems to be a really popular sound. Like. The really high notes. I've heard this in a lot of tracks recently. There's sort of sounds that you wouldn't really expect them to be there, but they end up sometimes being the main point of the song. All right, so here's our final sound. I kind of like this weird high thing that we've got. And let's go ahead and turn off the comb filters and turn them on just so we can hear what those are doing. So there it is. Turn them on. We've got this really low thing down here, and I am going to get rid of that. So I'm just going to add a filter here. We're going to put it at the top, and we're going to make it a high pass. Because these aren't doing that much anymore because they're so low, let's just make them all higher. Well, that one was doing something important. That really changed it. And now let's do them went off. So it's a little more consistent of a sound. I kind of prefer the comb filtery stuff. Just, I like the motion it adds. There's a little more distortion, too, that was not happening before. And I'm pretty happy with this. What should we call it? Let's come in here. We'll go to it. Uh, this is a lead. I guess we'll just name this Super Crazy Distorted Lead. Super Distorted Lead. Description. Play high notes. Exclamation mark save. Cool, that's that. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.